Okay, right. Well, I say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, my name is Paul Stanbury. Um, I'm now going to take you down to uh, Botswana and show you some of the wildlife and scenic highlights of, uh, of this uh, fabulous um, African safari destination. So Botswana, so where is it? It's right down in, in Southern Africa. Um, it's to the southwest of, of, uh, of sorry, to the south of, uh, of, of Zambia, where Georgie's just been taking you around, straddles the Tropic of Cap Capricorn, um, and offers one of the last truly unspoiled wildernesses um, left, in, left in the whole of Africa. So we fly from, um, from London down to Johannesburg in South Africa initially, and then from Joburg, um, we fly up into Botswana itself. Um, and depending on which tour you opt to, um, to choose, then you either fly into Morn to, to explore the Okavango Delta. We can fly up to Livingston and Victoria Falls to start there and go down into Chobe uh, National Park. So most of so the, to, to the two popular trips that we that we offer to northern Botswana. Um, we have our Botswana's Desert and Delta Safari, um, which includes seven nights of fully serviced mobile camping on the edge of the Okavango Delta, um, split between the Kwai Concession and uh, Maremi Game Reserve. We do two forms of this trip. We do a mammal focused tour. So if you're particularly keen on your mammals, then that's the one to go for. And um, we also do a couple of birding departures as well. So if you're very keen on um, seeing some of the more um, unobtrusive and uh, less showy birds, um, then pick your birding trip, pick the birding trip. Of course, on both tours, you're gonna to see plenty, plenty of uh, mammals too. So we run most of our Botswana tours um, in the dry season, which stretches from August through to um, November. But we've also got some um, at the, um, the greener, wetter time of the year in April and May. And that's an, it is a nice time to go, particularly if you're interested in birds, as Georgie mentioned in Zambia, um, when Africa greens up, all of the widows and the wythers and the weavers molt into their wonderful, spectacular breeding plumage. And you've also got birds moving down from further north um, to, uh, to, to winter there as well. Um, so say so this trip is split between Kwai and Maremi. Kwai boasts one of the, some of the best game viewing anywhere in the Okavango. And since the private concession, um, you can do um, walks and night drives in Kwai, which you can't do in Maremi. So Maremi is a game reserve, and that, uh, Maremi is one of the finest um, game reserves really anywhere in Africa. Uh, it covers over 5,000 square kilometres of the eastern side of the Okavango Delta. So as well as this seven night trip, we also do um, a longer two week safari called Botswana's Highlights. And that starts up in Livingston at Waterbury Lodge, a place that George showed you, and then moves through Chobe National Park, um, through to Chobe, down to Savuti, and in, into the Maremi area um, to, to end before flying out of Moor. So one of the great things about Botswana and the vehicles that, that we use, um, we use fully open-sided vehicles, um, great visibility, you've got sunshade um, over the top, but with a step rows of seats in the back, so great, great visibility, uh, really good if you're keen on photography as well. And um, we tend to um, mostly focus on mobile um, camping safaris in, in Botswana. And that really does get you out into the wilds. Um, and we use private, private campsites. So these are not public campsites. Um, our groups have exclusive use of the, of the sites. Um, and the, the tents are comfortable. They're set up by the campsite. You don't need to worry about doing any of the camp chores, of course, or the cooking and the cleaning and the setting up and taking down of the campsite is all dealt with by the, by the camp staff. This isn't sort of camping in the UK where you're laying on the floor with a root in your back in the pouring rain. It's, it's, it's comfortable camping. There are proper camp beds, proper bedding, pillows. Um, each camp, each tent has its own 
bush loo um, out the back, its own private bush bush loo, um, with a bucket shower, which the guys will fill up with warm water for you um, in, when needed. Um, now, I first start, did these Botswana safaris over, over 20 years ago. You never had the luxury of having your own bush loo. You had to sneak out in the night with a torch, shine it around to make sure that there's no eye shine, nip to the toilet tent, and then back into the, to the tent to uh, go back to sleep. Um, in the morning, you're woken up by the beautiful song of the uh, white brow robin chat. Um, the uh, of the Hugolins robin which has a very it's a beautiful fluty sound and is one of characteristic um, songs of the of the Okavango region. Um, so, say we time our Okavango tours mostly for the end of the dry season or during the dry season when the water has receded um, and the game is that much that bit more concentrated. So we explore a mix of, um, of wetlands um, and Mpani woodland. Um, the, the Okavango is the world's largest in the delta and is fed by the, by the water, um, water that rainwater that falls in Gatlin Golden Hyde Highlands, a um, thousand miles to the, um, uh, to the northwest. But it's a mix of these open um, wet areas and Mapani. Uh, woodland. Um, and the different habitats also have a different range of birds and, and wildlife to, to look for. Um, as with most African safaris, you're up and out at dawn, you're woken up before sunrise, given a cup of coffee, some water to have a quick, quick wash, and then you head out to enjoy the coolest um, part of the day when the wildlife is at its most active. And you're out on your safari until half 10, 11 o'clock, then you're back to camp for a, a brunch and a siesta before heading out again uh, later on in the, in the afternoon. Plenty of elephants in, in Botswana. In fact, Botswana has the world's largest population of, of elephants. So you'll see these wonderful animals commonly throughout the trip. There are over 130,000 elephants in, in, in Botswana at the moment. Large numbers of buffalo as well, um, herds numbering in the hundreds, sometimes in thousands during the, um, especially during the dry season when they, when they congregate together in, in massive herds. There are plenty of zebra. Um, these are the, the virtuals type with the shadow striping um, on the flanks. Um, and other antelopes and ungulates to, um, to look for and enjoy um, as well. There are a greater kudu, um, this is a, 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 a male a greater kudu, plenty of impala, and if you're lucky, maybe some of the, some of the rarer species, such as rowan and, and sable um, antelopes. And the giraffes here are southern giraffes, um, and they, again, are common and, uh, and, and frequently, frequently seen, sometimes in some sizable herds. And where you've got such an abundance of, pre of prey, of course, you, you've got the predators um, and uh, lion are, are commonly seen throughout the Moremi and Kwai and the Okavango area uh, in, in general. And you might be lucky enough to see a leopard lounging, lounging up in a tree uh, during, the, during the heat of the day. Um, and one of the main animals that anybody um, traveling to Botswana on safari would really like to see is the, the African wild dog. Um, Botswana is one of the best places from anywhere in, in Africa to see this uh, um, amazing animal. It has one of the highest densities of wild dogs. I'll, I'll let Ben tell you about their uh, ecology and a bit more about them when he does his talk um, after the break. And where you've got the predators with the prey, of course, you've got plenty of scavengers as well. So spotted hyenas um, are, are commonly seen um, and around the around the, the, the lion and leopard kills, you'll get jackals and a variety of vultures, marabou storks, and other and other birds and, and animals that come down and scavenge the, the leftovers. So, of course, as well as the mammals, the bird life is, is absolutely abundant and, and colourful and diverse. Over six hundred species of birds have been recorded in Botswana, um, which is a pretty high number for a landlocked country without any coast. Um, and with um, which is you know, most of Botswana is, is desert, it's only really the Okavango and a couple of other areas which are greened up due to the permanent water. 
Um, the carmine bee eaters, so to George, he showed you spectacular colonies of carmines along the Luangra River. You should see southern carmine as well in, um, in Botswana. Beautiful, other beautiful birds, such as the southern red bishop. Um, so if you particularly want to see the birds in their breeding finding, as I say, go earlier on in the year um, after the rains when, when the land is greened up um, and a lot of the birds are, are breeding. Um, we do a birding trip in November and we do one in April. By November, the rains have normally just about started. Um, and, when, um, and when the land does green up, it brings in some um, inter-African migrants from, from further north, as well as Palearctic migrants down coming down from Europe. But as soon as the rains have fallen and things green up a bit, you get a wonderful variety of, of cuckoos, um, the most, probably the most spectacular of which is stunning. Um, African um, emerald cuckoo. Other commoner birds around include the grey go-away bird, um, so named because of its call. It has a kawaii, kawaii type call, which sounds a bit like go away, go away. So it's a common bird throughout much of, um, of sub-Saharan um, Africa. Um, and something a little bit uh, rarer, um, the, uh, the, the wattled crane, which you can find in the in the wetter areas of, of the country, especially up in the Okavango. So we include, say, the, the Kwai concession because there it's, it's you're not so restricted on the activities that you can do. So you can do a walking safari um, in the morning um, at first light, and that gives you a, a great opportunity really to to look at the, the smaller uh, um, wildlife, and in particular. For the birders, it's, it's great to be out on out on foot, and it's easier to to bird watch in that way. But in Kwai, you can also uh, take a night drive, which you can't do in in Maremi. You have to be back in uh, back in on the camp by dark. But in Kwai, you can head out with a spotlight after dark and go look for some of the nocturnal animals. And hopefully, see, um, including the bizarre spring hare, which is a, about the size of a rabbit and is a cross, which almost looks like a cross between a kangaroo. Um, and uh, and a rabbit. And it's time also to look for for hunting um, uh, leopards. And there are some nocturnal birds to look to check out. Um, if you're lucky, the spectacular pennant winged uh, nightjar, along with giant eagle owl, white faced scops owl, um, and a variety of other interesting species as well. Now, whilst our trips, our main tours don't include time in the heart of the Delta, um, um, we do offer the opportunity to extend these tours. We find a lot of people decide just to extend their tour by three or four days, hop on a, on a light aircraft in Morn, and then fly to the, to the heart of the Okavango to stay in one of the, the camps right out in the permanent waters of the, um, of the Delta. Um, and this is where you get to see that fantastic um, view of the Okavango Delta um, with a maze of waterways and woodland stretching up into the distance. We'll be flying over herds of elephants, pods of hippos in the water and heading out to a lovely camp such as, such as Guns Camp here, um, one of the so-called wet camps in the, say the, in the permanent water. And here you do it more than, um, rather than do lots of game drives, you're doing mostly game walks and, um, and Mokoro rides as well. These are very comfortable camps. Um, they're, very, they're mostly very small. They take sort of 15 to, to, to 20 people. And so you head out um, each day, um, either out on, on a Mokoro ride, out into the, into the wetlands or um, out on a walk. In the dry months of the year, a lot of these camps also do offer um, um, vehicle safaris as well. So if you particularly wanted one that the vehicle safaris as well as the Makoros and the walks, then that's certainly um, um, possible. But being out on Makoro is a wonderfully peaceful way of exploring the Delta. And you get to see some of the smaller, um, the, um, more unobtrusive um, types of wildlife, as well as the, the bigger um, um, mammals and birds. So the wonderful little painted reed frog here is commonly seen um, out in the waterways. You've got the lovely uh, African chicana, the really trotter, Got all kingfishers, great and small, from the, from the small little malachite kingfisher up to the um, giant kingfisher, which is one, um, one of the, the largest kingfishers in the world. And the same with the herons. You've got a small uh, black heron here doing its umbrella fishing, where it's uh, 
that stretches its wings over its head to create a little patch of shade, which attracts fish, and it can more, e more easily catch the fish that way, up to the Goliath heron, um, the, the largest heron, again, in the world. And if you particularly want to see Pell's fishing owl, well, the, the Okavango is the place to, um, to, to, to see it. Um, and there are a couple of camps, Pom Pom Camp, that I went to a few years ago, had a Pell's fishing owl actually come down and sit outside of the, the main restaurant area on a tree in a lake in, in the evening. Um, so if you particularly want to see Pell's, let us know and we'll see which is the check to see which is the best lodge um, at the moment to see this spectacular, huge owl. And as its name suggests, it feeds primarily on fish um, and will also take frogs as well. Um, I'm just going to now just finally take you down to further south in, in Botswana. Um, the um, Maremi and the Okavango is probably the key safari destination in the country and the place that most people think of when they think of Botswana. But um, the Botswana has other fantastic um, wildlife reserves to enjoy. The central Kalahari Desert being, being one of them. This is to the south of Morn. It's about a six hour drive down from, from Morn. And the central Kalahari Game Reserve covers nearly 53,000 square kilometers of land. And that's 10% of Botswana's land area, which is actually larger in size than, than the country, than, than the Netherlands. It's quite different to the Okavango. Of course, it's much drier. It's a flat, dry, scrubby landscape dotted with dry pan, dry, dried out lakes grasslands, woodlands and, and dunes. But even though it does come across as being quite a harsh de and um, dry desert type landscape, it is still full of, uh, of wonderful uh, wildlife. So our Botswana Kalahari Desert uh, tour goes in March time. We do this, we, we operate it in March. At the end of the rains, at this time of year, um, the, the Kalahari does green up a bit more. Um, then later on in the year when it gets a lot drier. So it's a 10 day tour, first night staying in Morn, and then the other six nights split between um, campsites in Deception Valley and Passage, Passage Valley. It's quite a typical sort of scene down in the central Kalahari, a flat grassy plains dotted with Gems, Hemsbok, um, the Oryx. Once again, it's a very similar setup to the campsites. You, you've got your own tents, we have our own private um, camp campgrounds, um, and a very comfortable way of exploring the land. In in March time, say after the after the rains of uh, December, January, February, um, if the rains have been good, then you get this wonderful display of flowers um, um, popping up out of the dry desert landscape. It really, is quite a, a fleeting show of colour before they're. Um, um, desiccated by the by the hot sun. The wildlife here is uh, really interesting, but it is in many ways quite different to the to the Okavango. So we can extend an Okavango trip down into the central Kalahari if you want to get a contrasting variety of wildlife and landscapes. That was um, springbok that I just showed you earlier. Um, a uh, um, an antelope um, that specialises in these very dry um, habitats. The central Kalahari is home to the famous black, black maned lions. Um, it has one of the highest densities of, of cheetah um, anywhere in Botswana. Cheetah like when these open, um, flat, wide open um, landscapes and they, they prey primarily on the, um, on the springbok. If you're lucky, there are, there are wild dog here as well and they do range over, over huge areas, um, but this but uh, we had the group, well, the last group we operated to Kenta Kalahari, which was back in um, March 2020, just before lockdown, and had some really nice views of wild dog. There are um, suricate, meerk meerkats to, to be seen, and some interesting birds as well, from the huge Cory Bustard, um, one of the world's heaviest, um, largest flying birds, to the beautiful crimson-breasted shrike, um, and the lovely little violet-eared waxbill. Um, and there's some being a very, very harsh desert environment, there's some quite interesting, more unusual species to look out for here as well. Um, the bat-eared fox, um, a specialist of these very dry habitats that feeds a lot of insects and termites. 
um, they are they are quite commonly seen, but you need to be uh, very lucky indeed to see the uh, the, the aardvark. Um, and to, um, so, but if you do, if you are particularly keen on seeing aardvark, actually, the tour to to consider is a trip we do down to South Africa called South Africa's Rare Mammals. Um, on that particular tour, we've not actually failed to see aardvark um, on on any trip that we've run over um, since we started the the tour a few years ago and of course at sunset the, the wonderful clear air unpolluted by any sort of light pollution reveals this amazing um, starscape of the, of the Milky Way it's, the, it's always one of the most endearing memories of any trip down into the deserts of, of Africa and these amazing views of the, of the heavens um, and just put a couple of Final slides in to illustrate that we can also extend your tour to Botswana with time of the Victoria Falls as well. So after the Central Kalahari, you can hop up to Vic Falls, and it's this time of year when the falls are um, at their at their highest um, of the flood. If you want to go later on at the end of our um, um, our uh, Okavango trips, which is on September, October, November, then the water levels are are that much lower. And as Georgie mentioned, the place to stay is, is Water Berry Lodge on the edge of the, the Zambezi River. Um, as well as the falls, it's, there's some interesting different birds to be seen around the lodge and around the Victoria Falls area, including the trumpeter hornbills here. And it's the place to go to see um, Zambia's only uh, population of, of white rhino in the Mosiun Tunya uh, National Park. So, I will leave it there with a uh, with sunset over the, um, over the plains of, of Africa and say thank you very much for listening.